Just hit that like button. If you have a question, put the put the letter Q and, and write the question out and we'll try to get to it. But before uh, before we go any further, I just wanted to go to your article that you wrote on mm. Edu. Now, if if I'm not mistaken, you were, uh, you were basically trying to debunk the myth that Arsenal are bad at selling players. And we need to improve, obviously, because we still haven't sold... Yeah players to uh, yeah. to the same level as Chelsea and Manchester United and other clubs. But you believe that it's a myth that Edu has a bad record at selling players. I'm I think it's, 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 it's not a myth that we're bad at selling. It's a myth that we're as bad as what some people think we are. Um, some people think that Arsenal are terrible sellers when it comes to, to making money in the market. The reality is that that, that was the case. But Arsenal have significantly improved their sales reputation in the last couple of seasons. I think what people don't necessarily take into account, of course, Can you was, give me some examples? Yeah, of course. I think when you look at following Balogun, who, you know, made a handful of senior appearances for Arsenal, we sent him on loan, did well at Monaco. But I never really saw him being of a, of a level that meant that he was going to break into the Arsenal first team. So to get upwards of £30 million with a 17.5% sell-on clause in that deal, which, you know, if he was to have done well, because a win-win, really, if he did well at Monaco and moved on and got another, like, £40, £50 million transfer, Arsenal would be making, you know, just under 20% of that, you know, as, as a sell-on. If he didn't do well, which I don't want to say he didn't do well this season at Monaco, but I certainly think he had a season which vindicated Arsenal's decision to, to get £30 million plus for him. you got Granit Xhaka, of course, who, despite the fact has done very well at Bayer Leverkusen, to get £20 million plus for him, you know, despite the fact that he only had a year left on his deal and Arsenal are bringing in Declan Rice to, to basically replace that that left eight position. I know that people thought it was the six and certainly it's turned out to be the left eight that Rice has, has moved into and the expectation is that will probably continue into the foreseeable future as well. To get upwards of £20 million for for Xhaka was, was obviously very good. And then you go back a little bit further, you know, to the start of our Arteta's tenure, Joe Willock got us £25 million, um, you know, when he moved to to Newcastle. And despite Emi Martinez, who's a player that's gone on to do very good things at Aston Villa, after only 12 appearances, Arsenal ended up getting just close to £20 million for him. I think we look at that with somewhat some regret, but at the it's time, just, it's, it's much better than it maybe looked. I know you've been on Dan's channel often uh, recently mm, also, so you probably up. see similar, Dan, big up Dan Potts, Man podcast. You probably seen the pushback that I get whenever I go on there. We talk. They talk about Lakongas. They talk about Alnenis. They talk about mm. Cedric's. We talk about the ones talk, that are barely a mark on our investment sheet. Yeah. In ad in addition to our our poor our poor uh, our poor sales in the past are mm. being basically pushed on Edu. But from since Edu's come in, has he been able to actually sell any of the players, or is it that the market has not been looking at any of our players as valuable? Which one would you rather say? I think well, I think it's a combination of 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 the two in some ways. I think Edu has had his struggles in the market because what Edu when he when basically when Edu comes in in you know before Arteta does, um, and at a time where Raul Sanya he's of course at the club and the dealings we did during that tenure of, of uh, Sanya he and Hasfami and um, Sven Mizentat, you know, we made some incredible financial questionable decisions. And at the start of our tenure as well, we didn't make the best decisions either. You had Willian, you had Cedric, you had Pablo Marie coming in. Willian was put on a huge you know, amount of money, didn't deliver. Um, and Arsenal had to make sure that when we moved forwards, we were going to overhaul the squad in a way that was still financially viable for us, but with an element of risk because we could only bring in players that you know, we couldn't bring in the Declan Rices three years ago. If we were spending money, it was spending money as close to £50 million, but not really any higher. So Ben White came in, you had Partey coming in for 45, you had Tommy Asu coming in for 20, you had Zinchenko and Jesus still beneath that £50 million bracket. And it wasn't, of course, until we signed Havertz and, uh, and Declan Rice that Arteta finally kind of broke that £50 million threshold. So Edu's in a position where he's got our overhaul of squad with a lot of players that there isn't too much interest in because we've put players on silly wages. There are players that are ageing. There are players that aren't fitting into plans like Ozil, like Socrates, um, and simply aren't good enough. So the irony was, of course, that Arsenal and Edu were getting loads of criticism for not selling well enough. But at the same time, we're criticizing the players for not being good enough, you know. And so, how, where, where does the balance come? Do you criticize the club for not having a good enough squad, but then criticize the club for not selling well enough, despite the fact that you yourselves don't think the players that we've got to sell aren't good enough? And, 
you know, unsurprisingly, we didn't have too much interest in those. But that has changed gradually, and we have overhauled the squad very smartly. And you know, you look at the, the all of the investment under Arteta, which you know amounts to, I think it's five hundred ninety million before add-ons, and then that adds up to about six forty to six fifty. It's not this seven hundred million figure people lie about, but you know, when yeah. it comes to that amount of money that we've invested, if you look at how much of it is a hit as opposed to how much of it are misses, it, the hits far outweigh the misses of our investment. Oh, yeah, when it comes to our incomings. But, you know, people, they get upset about stuff like this. 13 million, Aubameyang, uh, they got 13 million from Chelsea, Barcelona. Mm -hmm. You got the Miguel, you got the situation right now with, with um, what's that academy kid? Omari Hutchinson went to Chelsea, and now mm -hmm. they're going to get twenty million for him. We're going to get a very good chunk of that money, by the way. Really? Yeah. Uh, when you say a good chunk, you mean like twenty percent or something like that? I yeah. don't know the exact figure. I just know from what is being we have a sell on. We have a there's a sell on clause supposedly in that. Amazing! In I didn't know. I need that. to double I... check it, but that's the rumor at the moment that we have. A, a wow! Sell I thought I've I thought seen people say fifty percent. I don't know if it's as high as that, but there is suggestions that there is a yeah, sell -on fifty percent is crazy, but. Mm. I am impressed. If they did put a selling clause, that's that's great. But mm. I thought the player left on a free deal. You that's can still I'm... get sell on clauses in players that leave on um, on freeze, so it it can still happen. It's rare, but it it can happen. That's that's amazing. If that's the case, uh, also the main thing that I had issues with Edu is it seemed like at the beginning of his tenure he was just signing a lot of players with release clauses and low signings but mm. after getting the Declan Rice deal over the line I think he has a lot more credit in the bank for me but I need to see sales of Eddie and Ketia potentially for 30 million plus maybe Smith Rowe we have a market for him it looks like Lakonga we're gonna have a market for him these guys if we can get decent returns for these guys I think he can definitely change his reputation. And as you said, sales reputation under Edu, it, it just might not be as bad as many people think. And if he does do what we think he can do this window, then we might break that 35 million pound barrier that you've been talking about. Mm, yeah, potentially. I mean, there are, there are a number of players out there that I think that, you know, Arsenal are not going to be open to to selling. Smith Rowe and Ketia, um, Partey, of course. You've got Ramsdale, Tini Lakonga, Tavares, of course, as well. Um, there could be some surprise exits. You never know what might happen with Zinchenko. You never know what might happen with Jesus. You don't know what might happen with um, Kivior. You know, there are players that could leave the club and could earn us money. I, I, I'm not expecting Arsenal to spend like a Declan Rice amount of money on a player unless there is a huge amount of sales that we make. But those sales could lead to Arsenal, meaning we can go and invest something bigger. A, uh, an opportunity will have to arise that, is unlike anything else. Mm. Um, let me ask you a quick question because I know I know you you might know a little bit more about transfers than I do. Uh, obviously, I'm not asking you for ITK information. I'm just seeing what's your is what's your opinion. Um, there's a player I like, and I've been. Thank you for watching that short clip. Hopefully, you enjoyed that video and you left a like on the video. Leave a comment down below. And let me know what you thought about the discussion that we just had. And of course, as always, ladies and gentlemen, do me a big big favor. You can like the goddamn video, it goes a long way. And of course, if you want to check out some of the other content that's on my channel, it'll be here, 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 somewhere on the on the screen. But for now, I bid you guys adieu. Respect for watching, and if you're getting up to this level, you're a real one.